You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Welcome to If You Know Mary, You Know Jesus. Hello there, everyone. My name is Bob Cantoni. We're back again. We're continuing our series on the seven deadly sins. I really hope uh, you're benefiting from this. Uh, please uh, take a look at the last ones, the last couple of shows. We began with the sin of pride, and uh, we just finished the sin of covetousness. And tonight we're going to cover the sin of gluttony. You know, many find gluttony as uh, something that can be easily overlooked. It's taken pretty lightly. I mean, I don't know. I've noticed, uh, I'm sure you have noticed, but it really shouldn't be something to be taken lightly. The sin of gluttony is satisfying all of those appetites, um, disordered appetites, uh, whatever it may be, maybe overeating or um, over drinking, um, things like maybe we're spending too much time in video games when we should be spending time before the Blessed Sacrament and, and tuning into our Lord, giving Him His due, His just due of our time. He gives us everything. You know, maybe it's something like um, too much television. Whatever it may be, it's something that we are satisfying this, these, this, these disordered appetites, satisfying the disordered pleasures. Maybe we have so much internal pain inside that we're looking for that comfort through material things or food or disordered sinful pleasures. You know, I mean, it may take the pain away temporarily, these things, alcohol, drugs, you know, these things might be a temporary painkiller, but they never really satisfied and it only spirals us even further and further into more despair. We find ourselves looking for more and more. It never satisfied. Material things, um, sinful pleasures, they never satisfy, ever, because we're created for an infinite God. Our hearts are like a big hole in the middle of our chest the very core of our being. And as long as we keep filling it with these temporal things, disordinate pleasures or whatever, things that are highly destructive, they're actually self-destructive, you know, as long as we keep filling it with those things, we'll never be satisfied. But, you know, eventually it leads us to our destruction. God doesn't want that. The only thing that would really satisfy our heart is what St. Saint, Saint Augustine tells us. The heart will never rest until it rests in God because our heart is an infinite void and it can only fill, be filled with an infinite God. The love that is infinite is the only thing that will satisfy it. Yet, these, these things that we might enjoy, like certain foods or even drinking, it may be, you know, in moderation, God doesn't mind that. He wants us to enjoy it. It's when we use them um, we have an affection for them or they take precedence over God himself. These things actually become idols. Idols. We're seeking the comfort and consolation from something other than God. But it's really only God that can satisfy the human heart, satisfy these desires. And he is the only one that is the source of all perfection that we so desperately desire being perfected in God. We want to move towards our perfection. That is the eternal life. We want to be perfected in everything. God wants us to become truly who he created us to be. And we can't possibly attain that apart from God. We can't attain it by feeding our, our spirit and our bodies and our souls with stuff that is actually bad for us, you know. Well, that's what this show is all about, gluttony, the sin of gluttony, and um, it's, it's pretty serious. I think we need to be taking it seriously. The opposite virtue is temperance, which uh, we'll, uh, we'll bring up in, up in uh, upcoming shows. Uh, the, the, you know, these, the, we're talking about the vices first, and then the counteract the vices will be the opposite virtues. So, but I, w I would like to start with a prayer first. And uh, by the way, we have our, my good friend Robert. He's going to give us the teaching on gluttony. Hello there, Robert. Hello, Robert. Yeah, thank you for joining us again. This is, I'm um, looking forward to this one. And uh, I'm sure everyone out there is really 
finding it very helpful. Well, at least we're praying. Well, we're going to pray for everybody right now, as always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the most powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You're well, beloved spouse, dear Immaculate Mother, we look to you again. I love this show, dear Mother, because it, it gives me an opportunity to make you known and loved. And I know, and I'm, tr- I'm trying to get the message out there that you are, are there to be an, an, an enormous aid and assist to help us um, get rid of those things in our lives that we are holding on to for comfort. Help us, dear Mother, to detach from these things Ask Jesus to give us the strength to detach from all these vices so that we can make room for the Holy Spirit. He's a true comforter. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and a sanctifier. Help us to make room for the merciful heart of Jesus. It is truly Jesus' mercy that removes all of our pain, all of that, um, that craving. You know, It's really this craving that causes us to... Uh, to go after these things that we think are goods that are making us happy. But Jesus is our ultimate good. And help us to understand that and realize that, dear Mother. We, we call upon you, St. Joseph, in a very powerful way. You know it all too well, St. Joseph. You went to Egypt with Jesus and Mary, where Jesus destroyed the idols. He destroyed the idols. In fact, he gave me a dream a while ago. And he says, uh, very soon I'm going to destroy all the false gods in the world. So we're asking you, Lord, to do that. But help us to find you. You are our idol. We should idolize you. You are that which satisfies our hearts. You, Lord Jesus, are the beloved of our souls. And help us all to realize that and embrace that truth. And come to the knowledge of that truth and help us to totally surrender all that we are and all that we have. And the best way to do that is what St. Louis de Montfort teaches us and St. Maximilian Colby teach us. To surrender, do everything in and through Mary, but give a total surrender to Mary. St. John Paul II, totus to us. I give myself totally and entirely to you, Mary, all that I am and all that I have. And I entrust it to your care. And Mary will help us become those saints that God wants us to become. We call upon St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, all the heavenly court, Saint, and all the holy angels and saints to please be with us, pray for us, and intercede for us. Amen. And let me just say Amen. one uh, Hail Mary in uh, Latin for these prayers. Mm-hmm. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus, Santa Maria, Master Dei, ora pro nobis, peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Well, yeah, I'm excited Amen. about this, Robert. Uh, you know, this series is very powerful teaching, so... You know, um, we did like we did the last time. I have a scripture, and our, our good friend Dr. Mahfoud, who gave me a beautiful uh, scripture from Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter seven, verses eighteen through twenty-three, and he, he brought up a be- an incredible point on the uh, the vice or the, the sin of gluttony. So anyway, this is what Jesus teaches, Mark chapter seven, verse eighteen through twenty-three. And Jesus, well, he said to them, Jesus, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into man from outside cannot defile him? Since it enters, not his heart, but his stomach, and so passes on. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. Now, the key word there is defile. Anytime we are defiled, we are moving towards corruption. And it's painful. 
because we're not moving towards our perfection. Deep down, uh, the law of nature, uh, the, the natural law within us, which is, stems from the eternal laws and the divine laws, because it's based on the divine reason, and since we're created in the image and likeness of Almighty God, we have reason. We know deep down that what, if we're doing something wrong, we know we're doing something wrong. Like a child, you know, who'll go and steal something. And for the most part, he's probably feeling deep down, gee, I shouldn't have done that. A child, they know better. But maybe I'm going to hide it. See, that's what happens. We start hiding. All right, coveting, theft, uh, deceit. We start deceiving people. We start hiding it. Foolishness. But once the kid gets caught, mommy and daddy, they know better. You can't pull the wool over mom and dad's eyes. No more than we can pull the wool over God's eyes, you see? But deep down, we know we're doing something wrong. But when we get caught, we're like Adam and Eve. We want to hide from it. We don't want to expose our shame. We don't want people to think of us badly or, you know, to know the, the crimes we have committed. So this is what's happening with sin. But it's out of a man is what defiles the man. And once they, we become defiled, now we start looking for something to comfort that pain to douse the pain, to ease the pain. Maybe it's drinking, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's pornography, maybe it's fornication, maybe it's um, too much television, maybe we're uh, engaging in video games where we kind of go into a world uh, that's a, not, it's, um, a virtual reality. Um, what, I, you know, what I see in a lot of actors, Hollywood, is they act in movies kind of in a way that they would that's the kind of a world that they picture themselves that they want to be in because the real world is probably painful so we try to escape in these ways but either way what comes out of a man is what defiles a man and these are sinful things sin hurts but that's why Jesus gives us his mercy and he gives us the sacraments he gives us the sacrament of reconciliation but he also tells us go and sin no more because it will lead you to the ultimate eternal destruction this is what not this is what God does not want for us and this is what you don't want for yourselves and for your children and for for your loved ones and we don't want that God is trying to lead us to salvation and, and completeness. He's trying to lead us to perfection and contentment and perfect happiness. But we can't do it as long as we're uh, attached to sinful pleasures and things that uh, ultimately lead us to self-destruction. So anyways, I, I, I said enough on that. Um, it's, it's really what comes out of us, and God wants to heal that, and, and we, we really want to pray for the grace to get on the road to conversion so that we can get on the path of life, and that will lead us to that. So that's is what sat, this is what satisfies the human desires. Okay, Robert, I um, yes. said enough on that scripture. It's beautiful, beautiful scripture. I thank Dr. Sebastian for that, uh, Dr. Mafu, great um, inspiration. So, okay, uh, go for it, Robert. You have the floor. Okay, now being in me. Advent as we are, um, um, there's so many parties going on and things like that, and it tends to draw us away into the secular, and we lose touch with the greatest joy, which would be um, really celebrating uh, Christmas as we should. Um, so let us, um, this will help us get back into mortifying the senses and practicing self-denial. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. Gluttony. This nation has become a nation of great gluttony. The food consumption of many goes way beyond their physical needs. So many have been blessed with more than they need, yet they refuse to share this, their bounty with the poor. Many in this nation live gluttonous lifestyles, so we should not wonder why so many are overweight. Gluttony has become a lifestyle for many, a good rule to follow. You should not live to eat, 
but eat to live. When you abuse the body with gluttony, it can cause sickness and disease. It is important to remember that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and should be treated with the utmost respect. Look at our society. The sin of gluttony has become more important than God himself. Thus the gluttony in our society reveals the lack of respect and love many have for God. One must have proper discipline, for it is God's will that we do so. By our acts of gluttony, we reveal the lack of dignity for God and self. The amounts that many brothers and sisters eat exceed the amount that would be considered gluttony. In the days of old, there, was many, there were those who lived gluttonous lifestyles. Back in those days, ones who lived gluttonous lifestyles were the wealthy, such as kings and royalty. Their sins of gluttony condemned them for they allowed many of their people entrusted to them to starve. But today, we can journey to a restaurant and one meal received was more than a family could eat in one week. It is true. Based on today's standards, one meal that, is, that an individual eats would have been enough food to feed a family long ago. So many brothers and sisters search out restaurants that promote gluttony. Then, when receiving the food, they feast like kings and queens and forget about the poor and starving. Yes, the body needs the nutrition, but the body does not have to be destroyed by a gluttonous lifestyle. Some parents unknowingly are, are the trainers of gluttony. They force their children to eat everything on their plate, even if the child is full. Sometimes this teaches the child of gluttony, child of gluttony and will be lived throughout the, the child's entire life. There is a fine line between the right amount and the act of gluttony. Brothers and sisters, just speaking about eating or drinking excessively is a form of gluttony. If you spend excessive amounts of money on food, then it's necessary. This is a form of gluttony. Gluttony, gluttony can come in other forms as well. Many brothers and sisters live a self-indulgent life. They surround themselves in luxury and riches. They place expensive rings on their fingers and expend ex expend excessive amounts of money on clothing while the poor starve and wear rags for clothing. This is a form of gluttony. It is our duty under the authority of God to practice self-mortification of, of our appetites. So many in today's world neglect to fast, for they believe that it is not their duty to mortify their senses through the means of fasting. When we mortify our senses through fasting, we unite our will with the divine will, allowing us to overcome our vices. Another form of gluttony is the abuse of alcohol. Those who consume excessive amounts of al alcohol, which leads to intoxication, are in the most dangerous form of gluttony. Drunkenness is the downfall of many because it dulls their senses to do good and opens themselves up to do evil. Drunkenness has many sad results. Here are a few. For one who enters into drunkenness often loses his or her good name. It has a profound way of how people will look upon you, for many try to avoid those who live in drunkenness. Alcohol abuse prohibits proper thinking. It causes destruction of families. It destroys friendships. It would cause us to have less conviction to avoid sin. Many times it leads to separation of families and divorce. It would cause us to react in improper ways. Many times one who lives in drunkenness abuses their family both spiritually and physically. Many times it causes spousal abuse, child abuse, and even sometimes murder. Many times the one who lives in gluttony to alcohol rebukes anyone who tells them they have a problem. Alcoholism, alcoholism leads to unjust anger cursing, bearing false witness, 
stealing, gambling, fighting, and sometimes even killing. You must consider how many have been killed in auto accidents because of drunkenness. If we reflect on this, we will see only sadness, knowing that they lived in this deadly sin and died in it. We must understand that there are different amounts of intoxications. One who drinks excessive amounts of alcohol, which impairs their ability to function properly, which in turn takes away their dignity. This is a grave sin. If one drinks a glass or two of wine during dinner, this is less grievous. But the disorderly conduct, we would understand the seriousness of the sin. It is our duty to examine ourselves and see how many times we might have entered into the sin of drunkenness without confessing it in the sacrament of reconciliation. Holy Scripture is true, and Holy Scripture addresses the drunkard. Neither fornicators, nor idol worshippers, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor liars with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor railers, nor extortioners, shall possess the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10 through 10. Because of this teaching of Holy Scripture, it would be prudent to confess every time we have entered into the sin of drunkenness in the sacrament of reconciliation, then make a firm resolve to avoid this sin again. Though, though the Catholic Church teaches that we must observe moderation in alcohol consumption, we must understand that it is very easy to overindulge with alcohol, alcohol, causing us to enter into the dangerous sin of drunkenness. Without, without a doubt, some are able to abide by this church teaching, but most are not. Most purchase alcohol for the intoxication that it will bring them and others. This leads to alcohol addiction. If alcohol becomes a way of life, it can hold us bound and lead us to the fires of hell. How sad it is that the desire for money leads many to promote the abuse of alcohol to the youth. Look upon the commercials of sporting events and you will see alcohol being associated with enjoyment and those who are drinking in these commercials are considered to be the popular, which is a misconception. Thus the youth desire the lifestyle, and many find it, and the painful consequence that goes along with it. Do the, youth, do the young adults go to adoration and ask for God's divine assistance? Or do they seek their own will and seek self-gratification? Today, most seek joy in the wrong places. The evil one, the devil, has set up dens of fire in the youth Young adults flock to their to these droves. So many of the youth, so many of the young adults go to these bars and nightclubs and enter into drunkenness, where their will is open to the seven demons, the seven deadly sins. Most bars and nightclubs are filled with pride, covetousness, lust, anger, envy, gluttony, and slothfulness. This does not need to be explained. For those who go to these establishments witness it with their own heart, mind, and soul. Yet many do not seek to flee from it. The ones who journey there, more times than not, are filled with the demons of the seven deadly sins, sometimes not even knowing it. Let us remember, everyone must make an account for their life when they come before our Lord. And those who are found unfit for the kingdom of heaven will enter, will not enter in, and those who with mortal sin are condemned by their own life and sentenced to hell. So without a doubt, it would be prudent for us to put more emphasis on the spiritual than the physical. If we follow all the sins that drunkenness has caused, it would circle the planet many times. You must understand, it is our duty to battle against our selfish will. 
and avoid the near occasion of sin. Anything that dulls the senses usually leads to sin, whether it is the gluttony of alcohol or the abuse of drugs. Even drugs that doctors prescribe for illness are thoroughly are thoroughly abused, for many utilize the drugs for a time of suffering. Then when the suffering is no more, they continue to use the drug for the intoxicating feeling. This is a serious sin. We must not be addicted to anything that can harm us, for it is a serious sin. It must be avoided at all costs. It would be good for us not to promote anything that could be detrimental to others. Allow the Holy Scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10, to help, to help us understand the seriousness of drunkardness. It is important. It is important that we practice the virtue of temperance and self-control, for this will combat the deadly sin of gluttony. Amen. Amen, and um, sobering. You know, I have to admit, uh, my past life of drinking, nothing got me more in trouble than drinking. You know, and I, I know many people will tell you that. I was, I remember that uh, that Harley show, what was it called? Anyways, they used to restore Harleys. I, I can't remember the name of the show. And he he mentioned, he admitted, he says, it was, you know, it was nothing nothing more than alcohol that got him in the most trouble so alcohol it really is it's, da- it's more dangerous than we think but it's like uh, like we mentioned earlier it's taken very lightly very lightly it's it's almost people laugh at the fact that someone's drunk i know people that uh, or i heard of people who especially in college they drank so much in in a short amount of time they literally died of alcohol poisoning it's not a laughable matter. It's not a joke. And uh, you know, many times when I was drunk, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm guilty just as much as the next guy. You know, but I had to get rid of the alcohol. Thank God, I never really was addicted. I kind of walked away. Thanks be to God for His grace. Walked away scot free. Um, but I remember many times just blacking out and falling and cutting myself with a bottle. That, that I fell on, only to find myself in a hospital bed, and the person that found me, you know, <laughs> I realized, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. So, But, yeah, please, uh, the sin of gluttony, it's not a small matter. Um, I'm sure I have a lot to work on, too. Um, I, I do like going to restaurants. I find myself not eating as much, thanks be to God. I don't care to eat that much, but... Yeah, you, you can overindulge very easily. So I, I also have to work on that, too. Um, so we're going to pray for the grace. But uh, anyways, a great teaching. Um, what else did I want to say about that? Yeah. Anything anything you want to add, Robert? Maybe you, what we yeah. do is I have some scru- – go ahead, Robert. Uh, yeah. and I got uh, some what I'd, what I'd like to say is um, – um, you know, alcohol, of course, uh, it alters the, the physiological state of our being. But there's one thing that's just as bad, if not worse, and that's the television and, and music. Because yeah. what happens there is these images are imprinted on our minds, especially the young children. And, and uh, Hollywood itself and all who make these, uh, produce these things, they, they do go to the end degree, spending every bit of money they can to, to utilize everything that could tantalize to the highest degree. And these images the devil can draw on for years and years in, in one's life. And I know many uh, uh, with the video games sometimes play as much yeah. as five to, to eight hours a day, if not sometimes even more, can you imagine? So they, they, they get taken out of reality, they lose social skills, and they're not able to provide for a family. So it, it's a really is a great danger. But if I could too, Robert, after you want to read some scriptures, I have something on the television. It's probably like maybe four minutes long. Absolutely. And it's a beautiful explanation, but let me know when you're ready, 
and I will sure. uh, introduce this and play it. But go ahead, Robert, with the scripture readings, please. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I mean, we're really shaped by our desires. Isn't that interesting? You know, when God gave us freedom, we're self-determining by our freedom to choose and act upon what we choose. That shapes who we really are. It's a, it's, um, a metaphysical reality or metaphysical happening. I become what I do. I become, in other words, if I go and steal a car, I've become a thief. So it's a matter of becoming. That's metaphysical. You know, it's, a, it's, an, it's an, an existing, a way of, of existing, existence, being, metaphysical. You know, and if I help the woman at the well like Jesus, the Good Samaritan, or if I become a Good Samaritan and I help some of the poor or I help a person who has fallen in the street to pick them up and you know, bring them to the hospital, then I have become a Good Samaritan. That's all. If I listen to the prompts and the deceits of the evil one, I become like the evil one. If I act upon them, I do the things that which Satan does. And I become like Satan. But if I do the things that Jesus teaches and act upon his word, I become like Jesus. See? It's so simple. That's why he's calling us away from a life of sin. Get rid St. Paul is in the St. Peter. They're saying there's a way of life and a way of death. Avoid the way of death. The way we described in the, the reading from uh, Corinthians. And, and, and live the way of life. It's only Christ. Live the way of life. And he will help us. The saints all of heaven helps us. He gives us the church as a, as a, a, medic, a medicine and um, as a remedy for our sinful ways. The church and the sacraments is a remedy. You know, so... And, uh, uh, yeah, you... Rob- and, yeah, we, and we've got uh, St. Catherine Emmerich um, was given, and we're even warned uh, through Jesus, through Saint, uh, the, the first American saint, Saint. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. And she was given a dream, I mean, I mean a, Jesus uh, appeared to her and, and told her that, this is, before, this is before the television was even invented, and said that, um, that, there would be a black box in every home in America, wow. and this is how the devil would enter. So here God forewarned us, and of course she was a, a, the patron saint of school teachers. And um, um, and here, uh, what the and, and here pretty much it was pretty much said that that um, uh, that this really is the the beast that was given voice. If you think about it. Yeah. With the technology, can you imagine in Revelations that was that was explained by Saint John, the beast that was given voice before all this technology. God knows all things. Continue, Robert. Yeah, be, thank you, Robert. I'm glad you brought that up. That is so important to understand. Why is it the beast? Because we're being fed lies constantly, especially the mainstream media. One lie after another, lie after lie after lie, a constantly distracting away from the truth. That's what the devil does. No, no, look over here, over here, over here. Look, look, look. He's a distraction. And he's, in, he's the master of deception. He's the master of exaggeration. So the black beast becomes the gospel. It becomes our gospel. What is the black beast? The television. Many, many people, their eyes are glued to this television to get their, their news, their information. But it is so misleading. Why not spend time before the Blessed Sacrament? You know, you know people watch the news, and you, you know, it makes you wonder, well, which news network do you watch? Fox, CNN, CNBC. You know what I would say to that? Don't watch any of them. But tune into the Holy Spirit of God daily. That's the news. The Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Father and the Son, the the Holy Spirit in prayer. That's where we should be getting our news from before the Blessed Sacrament in prayer. I mean, it's okay to watch television. 
You know, watch good shows, wholesome shows. Stay away from the news, especially in this day and age. I'm telling you right now, don't listen to them. They are and, and liars. And, and let me just and, finish this one thought oh, here. God, God and, it gives you the truth. So, you know, we must make things prioritize. Give God three hours of your day and maybe spend an hour on television, you know, and, do, and the rest do what you ought to do as far as your duties, you know. Go ahead, Robert. Yes, the, um, and in this way our domestic church will, uh, will be God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And that's, that's, that's what we have to, uh, uh, if we truly love it's God's family duty. So if our duty is taken up in selfishness and we go off onto our phone or the TV the rest of the time and our children go to their rooms and they do the same thing, we're really preparing them for hell and preparing ourselves for hell because where are they going to learn? So, so we have to deny if there's anything we can do for Advent, put it all away. Give yourself Fast to God. Yeah. And um, and if you want, I'll play this, Robert. If, um, yeah, real quick, a, let me just say this one point here. Okay, go ahead. Television Robert. is addicting. Just by the fact, and, and even the phones, they become addicting. You can't, it's almost like you can't live without it. That's how we know we're falling into some degree or another of gluttony. You know, we're getting our, it, the television becomes uh, like our holy hour. But it's the, it's really the devil's way of preaching his gospel. That's what we're being fed with. We need to be fed with the Holy Spirit and the sacraments of the Holy Roman Catholic Church, the Eucharist. Be fed with our Lord sitting before him in the Blessed Sacrament. He will feed us with the bread of life. I am the vine, you are the branches. You know, he who abides in me will be like a tree next to a river bearing great fruit. That's what we need to do. Okay, Robert, yeah, play, please play that uh, message, that uh, teaching on the television, The Beast. And here it is. Thanks be to God. The television. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, in the splendor of creation, our eyes are open to the glory of God's creation. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the evil one who seeks to destroy all that is good brings forth his dark tabernacle in the center of most homes. This device brings forth images as it were magic. The television destroys the soul. Many brothers and sisters who seek to do the will of God seem to crumble into the darkness as they kneel before the destroyer of the soul, the television, and allow the foolish pleasures to envelop them. The television hypnotizes those who watch it, and it brings those who become hypnotized into their darkest sin, especially those who burn with the sins of the flesh. In many homes, the television becomes more important than God Almighty. Amen, amen, I say to you, 98% of what is shown upon the television bears the mark of the evil one. Reflect upon your life. How much time do you kneel before the television with your eyes upon the misleading light that the television radiates? And how much time do you kneel before the divine light of God in the most blessed sacrament? The divine light that radiates from the super substantial bread from heaven, the blessed sacrament, is the true Lamb of God who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen, amen, I say to you. Go ye therefore to the Blessed Sacrament and receive the divine light of God. Much of the youth is being destroyed by the evil forces of the television, for the television consistently fabricates the violation of the Almighty God's Ten Commandments. Words can challenge a heart, but will the heart respond? I ask your heart. Can a man look upon his temptations and remain strong? I tell you, every ungodly temptation is open to the eye through the evilness of the television. It is time to flee the darkness of the television. For if you do not flee, 
it will be as a cancer, leading you into death, into the eternal fires of hell. It is time to flee the darkness of the television. It is written in the book of the Apocalypse. And it was given him to give life to the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should speak, and should cause that whoever will not adore the image of the beast should be slain. These words of God that were given to St. John speak of the television. Reflect upon where this image maker sits in your home and reflect upon the times this image maker seeks to mislead you into the sins of the world. I ask you, is it better to adore this image maker or should you adore the divine master of heaven and earth? Whoever shall hear these words knows the answer. For the Spirit of the Holy Ghost is upon you. It is time to come to the simplicity of goodness. Seek not to adore the image of the beast, but seek to glorify the one who has sent me to proclaim his divine word. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the television fabricates that good is evil and evil is good which in turn leads the world into a great darkness. For much of the world has become oxymoronic. If the world does not come back to the divine will of God, it shall see the divine justice of God. The television tears upon the soul of the faithful and poisons the soul with impurity. Many brothers and sisters who seek to follow God try to flee from the destruction of the television but they are unable. For the soul is willing, but the flesh is weak. I tell you, more often the flesh defeats the soul, destroying the will. It is time to mortify the flesh and resist the temptations that seek to destroy you. Flee the immoral light of the television and fervently pray for strength that you may be able to persevere over your desires. I call to all families, flee the darkness of the television and enter into the garden of good family values. Learn how to love one another and learn how to pray with one another. It is a great struggle for families in the period in which you are living. I tell those who are living in the sacrament of marriage, a family that prays together with sincere hearts for God shall stay together. May the light of God continue to shine upon you and bring you into the most splendorous, most glorious, most joyous kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Wow, that was rather sobering. Well, thank you for sharing uh, those teachings and that those thoughts, Robert. Um, you know, a friend of mine... You know, I, I I know uh, you, you you know the private revelation or inspiration. You know the church teaches that we don't have to accept. You know, and that's good. We should abide by that. You know, but Saint Paul teaches that uh, you know test the spirits. Do not uh, douse the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, in, in prophetic or private revelation. But we must discern and test and make sure that it is the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? We do it with this the authentic magisterium of the church, the teaching office of the church, with the sacred tradition and sacred scripture. It must jive with all three of those. If it doesn't jive with one or, t or two or all, then it must be discarded. It's that simple. But a friend of mine was telling me that she had a dream where she saw Jesus on the cross in the sky, uh, uh, and uh, he, was, he was suffering horribly, and... Um, something uh, apocalyptic happened in her dream, you know. And uh, what she saw next was all people, their eyes glued to the television, looking for answers as to what just happened. So it just shows you where we are looking to get our information from, the truth from. The problem is we're not always getting the truth from the television. You're getting distortions of the truth and a leading away from God. 
I'm not saying that it's it's uh, to, you know, there's good programs, but I would say, you know, moderate what you watch and give God more time than the television. You know, and, and I'll bet you, I was addicted to it. Um, you know, I I'm, I'm bet you there's a, a lot of addiction to the television. People are going to find it very difficult. Um, so uh, we need to pray for them, pray for everybody to detach from the television. But go get your information from the Holy Spirit before the Blessed Sacrament or in prayer. Go to prayer. Turn to Our Lady. Turn to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will keep us informed in the truth and will lead us to the truth. They'll lead us to good television programs, if there is any, like EWTN, perhaps. You know, um, so, but sacred scripture, read the lives of the saints. Use our time to, um, to feed on the good things of God. That's what our souls are starving for. And again, this is gluttony. We're feeding gluttony. We're feeding it with like the spiritual popcorn that is not really, it's not healthy. Or for our spiritual growth or our physical growth. So God wants us healthy both in mind, body, soul, and spirit. So I, um, I, I did promise to read some of these uh, scriptural quotes. I'm going to do a few, and then I think we will um, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, end the show for tonight, and then we'll continue with the next deadly sin. What, what's the next deadly sin, Robert, that you're going to look into? It is I'm sorry? It is anger. It is anger, Robert. Anger. Okay, so keep that in mind, and uh, we'll, we'll put together a show for that. But uh, let's see here. Um, these scriptures, I, I just came off my computer. Uh, well, you know what? Enough said on that. I, I, there's much scripture on the sin of gluttony. Just Google. references, Scriptural references to the sin of gluttony. You'll find tons. But anyways, uh, I will end with this thought. I did have a dream quite a few years ago. Again, private revelation, do with it what you will, that's fine. Um, you know, I, uh, it, it taught me something great. But I was in a church, uh, a big church, like a cathedral. And uh, I'm, I'm in standing in the center aisle facing the sanctuary and the altar. And I, was, I was maybe about 50 paces back, and all of a sudden, right from the altar area, down the steps of the sanctuary, rolled this huge scroll. It rolled right out, and it landed right before my feet, and I felt this incredible, oppressive... Um, it was an absolutely awful, sickening feeling because it had all the names of the false gods of the world on this scroll. It was uh, it maybe nauseous, and I wanted to run away from it. And all of a sudden, it rolled back, and then another huge scroll from the sanctuary rolled out toward me. And the scroll read over and over. In fact, I kind of heard the voice of God saying, One God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Over and over and over. Yes, God was teaching me something, because I had a lot of idols in my life, like the rich man. But I'm, 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 explaining, I'm expressing this dream to help the listeners to, to identify idols, but there's only one God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Once that rolled back, I felt this incredible oppression lift. It was gone, because I knew that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was the one true God. And that's when all of my misery melted away. And all of a sudden, I heard a very stern voice, but a very loving, firm, but an authoritative voice. And I knew it was the voice of Jesus. And he said, very soon, very soon, I'm going to destroy all the false gods of the world. It was... And then, and then once that was complete, that voice said what he, Jesus had to say, what he said, all of a sudden I found myself before the door of, of the divine mercy. Jesus was in that beautiful door that we see in all of the mercy images with the rays of blood and water flowing from his heart to me. And, and uh, it was alive. He was alive. It was like the wind was blowing through his hair. He had this absolutely gorgeous smile on his face, a very tender, loving smile 
but his, it was his mercy that melted away all the misery and oppression from these false idols. So it's really God's mercy that melts away these things, that he lifts us out of our misery, but also he enables us to overcome all these addictions to these false gods, the sins of the seven deadly sins, uh, the uh, sins of gluttony especially. The merciful love of our Savior is what heals all of our wounds and makes us strong to fight these temptations. Where do we find that? Right there before the tabernacle. When we receive Holy Communion at every Mass, we're receiving Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, the, the, the remedy, the antidote, if you will, the healing love of our Lord in His sacramental grace, the reconciliation. Go often. I, I highly recommend going you know, every two weeks. It's good if you went a, once a month, but it's even better if you go uh, twice a month. I try to go at least once a week, but I find myself lately going several times a week. I need it. I need it. I don't know if I can do without it. So anyways, I'll leave you with those thoughts, um, something to think about and uh, to meditate on. And may uh, we, we're praying for you. Robert and I are praying for you. I will remember all of you at all of our masses so that our Lord and his grace will help you and help others, you know, find their way to the heart of Jesus. But may the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through the hearts of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in this Advent season, through Christmas. May they bless you and your loved ones abundantly. And may you experience deep within the center of your beings, the core of your beings, the merciful love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good night, everyone. Amen. Good night. Good night, Robert. Thank you. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood, on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up when knowledge takes flight.